Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to add debouncing to your text inputs in React Native. So what debouncing is, is it's basically where you limit the amount of calls to a callback function. And this can be useful if you've got something that's sort of like some heavy processing. So maybe you're calling an API or doing some heavy like cryptography or something that's going to take up a lot of processing power or time. And you might not want it called all the time because it would be like a waste of resources or maybe cause a performance issue. So here I am, I'm just adding a flat list of fruit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you me filtering on text input. And then I'm going to debounce that um, filtering so that the um, fruits are only filtered after I haven't had any input for a certain period of time. So I've got my flat list, which takes in a property of data, which is going to be my fruits. And then it's got another property render item, which is a function that basically tells you how the item is going to be rendered. I'm just going to show my fruit as a text item. And if I go ahead and save, you'll see all my fruits appear on screen. Cool, you can see those now, but you can see they're also going off screen and that's because I need a safe area view so it doesn't interfere with my little um, sound part of my device. And I'll need to import that as well. I'm also importing text input because like I said, I'm going to add search to my React Native app and I'm going to use that to filter my fruit. I'm also going to import use effect and use state. These are just going to be used as part of my debouncing. The use state, I'm going to store the value that's going to be in that text input. So I'm going to have search and set search. Those are my state variables for the um, text input value and setting the text input value. I'm also going to have my fruits that have filtered out as um, a state variable and that's just so that when they change, it's going to update that flat list. By default, that's just going to be those fruits I've defined up there. I'll update my flat list to use that state variable of searched fruits. Now I'm adding my text input to my app. It's going to have a value of search and I'm going to set the placeholder to be search as well so that people know what to do inside that text input. And on change text, I'm going to call that set search initially. All this is going to do is set that search. It's not actually going to perform any filtering, um, but I'm going to also add some styling to my text input so that it looks a little bit better and is easier to click into. So I'm just going to add a border to it. I'm going to give it a um, border that's black and one pixel wide and solid. Cool, so I've got my style that I want now, um, but I have to apply that to my text input. So I'll just set the style property of that text input to be my style for the input. And you can see it looks a little bit funny still because it's right up against that placeholder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a margin and some padding, and I'm also going to stretch out that text input. So 
So yeah, you can see it looks a little bit better, but like I said, I want to stretch that out as well so that it doesn't sort of auto grow as I'm typing text that is bigger than this placeholder size. And I think that looks good enough. I'm going to want a function that I'm going to call, which is going to um, search those fruit. It's going to take in the text. That's going to get the filtered fruits by that text. So I'm just going to do a fruit stop filter. And then I've got my predicate function that basically, if it returns true, it's going to filter that fruit into my filtered fruits array. From there, I'm going to be able to set it to my search fruits and that will update the flat list. Now this is not a long operation because it is only a small list, but you can imagine if it was a very large list, this could take some time or maybe I'm, if I were doing something a bit more complex like cryptography, um, there's some things that take time in code and I would want to ensure that I'm not causing performance issues by having all this um, all this heavy functionality called quite regularly. So then I'll set my search fruits to be my filtered fruits and I'll set my search um, to be my text which will update that text input. I'm now going to update that on change text to the search fruit function and I'm going to start typing. So you can see it instantly makes a um, call and ch updates what's going to appear on screen based on what's included in that filter list. You can sort of see that it's not including Apple at present. I'm not too worried about that. Um, so yeah, my predicate could be improved to actually um, return the correct fruit that I'm looking for, but for now I won't worry about that. I'm also going to want to create a fake delay that's going to be used for basically showing you what would happen if my search fruit function was actually taking a long time because it doesn't take a long time at the moment. So that fake delay is a function that takes in milliseconds to delay for and it returns this new promise. And basically what that promise does is it will call the resolve of the promise after a set timeout of the milliseconds passed into the fake delay function. Now because it returns a promise I can await it and I can call that fake delay function with the timeout that I want to wait before I continue filtering my fruits. I've chosen a delay of three seconds and because I've got async await here I need to make my search fruit function async. So now I can go ahead and create my debounce function. So my debounce function is going to make it so that I only call my search fruits function after a certain time period. So what I pass into debounce is the function that I'm going to want to call after a certain timeout and my timeout I want to wait after the user input has um, stopped before I call this callback. So I'm going to want to clear timeout for any existing timeout that has already been created because I don't want that to be called if I am debouncing. Basically I'm saying, okay, I'm going to create a new set timeout because the user is still inputting something and I don't want to um, run too many times that search fruit function.
Mr. Bounce is going to return a function that takes in some arguments, which will then be passed to my callback. And basically, it will set a timeout to call that callback after the milliseconds. So now I'm going to create a function for my debounce search fruit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my debounce function, pass that search fruits function, and pass in the millisecond timeout I want. So basically, after the millisecond timeout, it's going to call that search fruits function, um, and it will remove any other um, timeouts that's previously added that haven't been called yet to ensure that only after a certain time after the user start inputting into that text input, it calls that search fruit. So it's not continuously calling it. So that debounce search fruits variable there is actually a function and it will take in the arguments like text, which will then be passed on to that search fruits function. So we can change that on change text to be debounce search fruits. You can see it's not actually showing my letter until after a little time period. And that's because of that delay I've added and the search search is actually um, after that delay. And also that um, debounce is not being called until after um, half a second as well. So that, yeah, there's a few things I need to fix here. I want to create a function that will always be called and that will just be anything that's light. So setting the search um, text, which is the text input text, I always want to do that regardless of whether the user is still typing. And that's because I want the UI to reflect what the user is inputting um, and it's not a heavyweight thing. So I can do it always and it's not going to cause performance issues. It's something that's expected that you'll set the state variable for the text input as the user changes the text. So yeah, I've got this new function set search text always and it's just going to set that state variable of search which will then update that text input accordingly. That's always going to be called from this debounced fruit search. So you can see it's still doing that, and that's because I just haven't um, updated my debounce to always call my always call function. So before I do anything else, I'll just call my always call function. I'm just going to pass the args as well. I'll just reload so I've got that list there. And now when I type, you can see that it updates that text input, but the search doesn't happen until a little while later. I actually could see that the grape showed up there for a second before disappearing, which means that our clearing of timeout is currently not working. So you could see it then when I did a little bit of a slower um, delete of things and the reason for that is actually that that timeout um, variable is being um, set to undefined basically every time the state refreshes. So I'm going to need to go ahead and make that timeout a state variable. But for now, I'm also going to ensure that I have my use effect function um, calling a clear timeout when the component unmounts. So you can see that I've got this return from use effect and that's going to call clear timeout on the timeout um, when the component unmounts. And because I've got this empty list, it basically will only happen the one time. So now I'm going to go ahead and make timeout a state variable. So that means that once I've um, set my timeout to clear, um, it's not going to become undefined and that means that I can clear the timeout um, appropriately because like I mentioned earlier every time this um, the state changes that timeout was being set to undefined and it was causing issues. 
So with the result of set timeout, which is an ID of the timeout, which you can then use to clear the timeout, I'm going to set that to the state variable timeout to clear using that set timeout to clear function. And in clear timeout, I'm going to call timeout to clear instead. So this time when I type PP, you should see it goes straight to apple rather than grape then apple. And you could see that there if I did it slowly once again. You can see it show grape then the full list. And that's because my debounce is only half a second. So my typing was slower than half a second. And that meant that it allowed the search fruits to be called twice because I had gone past that half a second before I continued typing. I'll just show you that it's true by increasing my timeout on the debounce search fruit. So if I go PP, it'll go straight to Apple. And if I go PP again, then it's going to go straight back to um, the full list. And you can see that even though I did it more slowly, it didn't show grape, and that's because I increased that timeout. Now you're going to want to play around with that timeout because if you have it too too high, then you're just not going to be calling it regularly enough and it'll be a poor user experience anyway. So yeah, we're fiddling around with that just to see what suits your what you would expect your user input speed to be and how slow your um, function is that's taking time that you want to debounce. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code is going to be available on GitHub.